first of all, my images will all be in parallel view, but um, because they are partly um, stereo slides, it could be worth, if you have a viewer like the owl or something like that, it could be useful to use it um, because um, like you might know, it's it increases the depth if you look through a viewer. So this um, is turned out to be quite a personal topic for me, uh, more than I have thought because it, uh, connects my passion for collecting old stereo photos um, with the first steps that I took in, stere um, in taking stereos up until my latest discovery that I made only a few months ago. Okay, um, I will try to first show you why hyper stereos are not only magical, but sometimes almost necessary. And I will try to do that um, out of a historical perspective. Then um, I will show some glass slides from my uh, personal collection, mostly French slides from the 1860s. Um, and then I, when you get a feeling for why hyper stereos are truly magical, I will try to explain you exactly why and how it works. But I will try to um, make this uh, part short. And finally, I'll tell you about um, possible modern approaches to hyperstereos. Okay, let's see. This was probably one of the pictures. Um, this is no, not a hyperstereo picture, but this is one of the early stereo pictures that might have been um, responsible for the great success in the 19th century. You immediately have the feeling as if you could step right into the scene and uh, catch uh, the kids, talk to them, or something like that. By the way, they have they have been standing still for maybe a minute or longer because the exposure times were so long. So um, you don't often see people on those images. This might be another example. Still no hyper stereo, but an example why, yeah, stereos in that time enabled you to travel. But there were also some limitations. As you might see here, well, you don't have the feeling that you could step right in. It seems quite flat. Even if you look through a viewer, it's not that overwhelming. And here, I think you need to have a special interest in that place. Otherwise, it's not that att attractive. This might be better because you have a depth effect, but actually not on the building that you want to see, just on the riverside, which covers a remarkable part of the photo. Here again, there is something in the foreground but the background where much more is happening remains quite flat. I hope you can see that. Um, still, of course, this is a, a early view of Syria. So it's still attractive for people, but it's limited concerning the depth effect. And here another very popular place, but still not that effectful. And here, when I first first saw this, I really thought if this would be, a, uh, if this is a stereo at all. If I would see this on Instagram, I would uh, probably think uh, the photographer did not understand uh, the concept of um, stereo pictures. But if you look closely, in the down right corner, there is something in the foreground. And luckily I have the same spot, but from a little more distance. And as you can see, if there is something happening in the foreground, you see that this is definitely a stereo. And also you get the feeling that the mountains have to be really far away. So putting something in the foreground seems to have been, yeah, a common solution for the problem. 
like here. Um, by the way, you can, I think you can keep your viewer on it. There will be only uh, stereo views, except one, uh, one um, sheet will be only text. So here, well, you could possibly think there is uh, so much going on in the foreground that you, you don't realize that the background is still flat. So it, it's possibly also a little bit of distraction. And also here. I really don't know why there are those trees in almost half of the uh, of the picture. But there were other more attractive possibilities, I think. You might know this picture also as a mono version from a postcard, maybe. This is, I think, uh, also today quite a famous place. And I think with a little um, with a little uh, sand um, in the foreground and the large reflection, it turns out quite attractive, even though the main subject is still flat. Here as well, again, half of the picture is nothing special, but because you have the reflection in the water, it's somehow interesting. And of course, you could also use revolutionary equipment. So no one will complain that this picture is also quite flat, but you have a, in that time unbelievable short exposure time so that you were able to see that the streets were actually full of people. Or you can, this is one of my, my favorite slides that I have in my collection because it really tells a story. If you have a close look, you can see two painters who might be painting the far away back mountains. And you really want to walk over to them, sit beside and paint your own pictures of the mountains. And this is of course also only 2D. Well, then there are some pictures where you can see a careful increasement of the baseline. If you look here, you see that the, the closest um, buildings have a 3D effect. I think even if you look without a viewer. But these buildings are already quite far away. So something must have been happening with the distance between the two cameras. And also here you can see that you can, yeah, have a sense for the depth and the distance of the mountains. Not much, but a little. Even in the middle, the, you, can, you can see the shape of the mountains. They are not completely flat. They also sold special equipment in the beginning of the 20th uh, century, which is maybe a proof for that hyperstereoscopy was already a known um, technique. Uh, this is a camera that I've bought yeah, um, in the end of the last year. And what you can see is a tailor lens that you can um, add to one of the um, lenses. So that you cannot take a hyper stereo immediately, but there is um, the manual that explains a process, what you have to do to take a real hyper stereo, move the camera, measure the, the baseline and so on. So this was already known one, over a hundred years ago. And if you do it, properly, you will get results like this. I will switch to the next. This is also Rome from another, another point of view. And still you can probably, if you free view, it will still seem a little flat, but if you have it in a um, traditional viewer, the slide, it's unbelievable. 
you could also combine short exposure with a hyperstereo effect. I love this one because there, there is all this dust and fog in the distance. It even lets me have a better sense for the, for the distance. This is a little closer, but still you can see the two towers um, in the foreground are closer to you than the big one. And this is uh, Schloss Heidelberg in Germany. Still much, much water covering um, the uh, um, regions of the photo, but I think you can still see, even if you free view, at least I can sense it, that the castle is closer to you than the background. This is also um, a city quite, quite near to me. I think only 20 or 30 minutes by car. It's called Bacharach. And here is my home, hometown. I was quite excited to get a hyper stereo um, of my hometown because it looks quite different. It should be from the, uh, yeah, from 1860, probably. So I think this was the last of the early hyper stereos. Oh no, there's one more. As well, you, um, again, you can see also the, um, the shape of the valley. Okay, but why and how does this work? David told you a lot, and I've spent most of the time, that's why there is not no article yet, because I spent most of the weekend um, to trying to do an animation for you, because um, even I, I thought I knew everything about hyperstereos and why it worked, but I didn't. I tried to uh, switch the screen. I found out even more, and I hope you found it find it as interesting as I do. So this is um, actually a program for geometry, uh, GeoGebra. But it's also useful to, uh, to play around um, with uh, some, um, yeah, like this. Um, as you can see, I have one object here. I call it F, object F for focus. And the reflecting light goes straight through our lenses because we are focusing on it and exactly is in the middle of our retina. The same in the right picture, uh, right eye. And if we increase the distance, it remains the same because our eyes are following until at the very horizon, our eyes are totally relaxed and that's the way you should look at the parallel view, you know. But still, the image of the um, object is in the center of our eyes. I can also increase the baseline, but for now it's not important. Everything remains the same. So what happens if we add another object in the same distance as our object we are looking at? Well, everyone who takes his own stereo photos will probably think that this will result in identical places on your retina as well, but it isn't. As you see here, the closer I move it, here you see there's almost the identical um, distance on our retina. Of course, this is only theory. There is something also happening with our experience. But the 
further I move it away, you see now, now we have really different places on our retina. And that would mean a double vis vision. As you know, if you have your hand really close to your face and you look to, uh, to the other side of the room, you see your hand in double vision. And that enables you to, to have a sense for the depth. So, but where are the objects that have identical places in your left and your right retina? You might have known or you might have not known. I did not know that they are on a circle. And this is called a horopta. And as you see, you can, you can believe or not, the object number one has the same place on the retina in both eyes. And the same with object two, object three, and so on. Um, it might not look like this, obviously, because your eyes, uh, the eyes are turned. But if I increase the distance, you see, there is no double vision. So this would mean if you have a large, large, large circle or here a smaller circle, this would mean your eyes would see exactly the same in both eyes if objects are surrounded here in a circle. Of course, we are in reality looking from one to another and we don't sense, uh, sense it that way. But what happens, um, let, me, let me see. If something is getting closer than this, it means you have a double vision like this. Um, you see the object that is closer here, the red one, in the right eye, it's exactly at the same place as object three, which you're looking at, it means it hides object three. You can't see it. Differently on your left eye, you have a little, it's a little bit shifted um, to the right. But what happens if you increase? And now here you see the problem of far away objects. They have almost the same place. And that's what's happening if you shoot um, something that is far away from you. It seems flat because you have no double vision. Even if this orange segment is fixed. But let me show you what a hyperstereo does now. As you can see now, here is zero space. But if you increase the baseline, it's like magic, the distance comes back. And that's why hyperstereos work. Even if the objects are far, far away, if you increase the baseline, you will get double visions on your retina as well. I hope this was not too complicated, but I, I thought um, if it's moving, it's maybe easier to understand. Um, before I switch back to my presentation, do you have any questions so far? I can read the chat. Okay, then I'll stop this. Uh, by the way, I I can share a link to this GeoGebra sheet here, and this and you should be able to um, play around with it as well. But not now. I wish I will go on in my presentation. So. There are a few possibilities um, today where you can do hyperstereos yourself without any further equipment. But of course, mostly this will be sequential stereos. And probably 
it, you will find yourself um, combining two pictures to a hyper stereo and you see something happens in the foreground. So this here is a little annoying, but still I, I like the effect of the, of the city. Because it's even more depth in it than I have seen myself standing on the riverside here. So riversides are good places as well as here. This is also my hometown, but I think, yeah, the river is not that uh, big as it looks here. This is something um, David mentioned that it's also, um, you can play around with the depth effect if you increase the baseline. Bridges are also good places for hyper stereos because you are on a high place and have nothing in the foreground. And also buildings. Uh, Thomas is here as well. And this is a hyper stereo Thomas and I took together when I visited him in uh, Zurich in Switzerland. And this was taken from a church tower. And what happened, we, um, we had um, two cameras, each of us. And I took um, Thomas left camera from his rig and gave him my right camera from my rig. And then fortunately, the, um, the tower where we were on had um, balconies on both sides. So I um, stepped out to the left and he stepped out to the right. We uh, talked about in which region of the um, picture the church tower is and so on. And then we, um, we released our shutters and that's what's happened. And I'm a little proud um, on Thomas and me because I recently got the same perspective, but a little bit older. And I think we've added more depth. So buildings are another possibility, but also moving vehicles if you shoot out of a train this could be a little bit too hyper it's uh, good for free viewing and beautiful on instagram but um i looked with an old viewer and it was just too much like david told um with his cube it depends on where you view it but it's i think another category you can shoot hyper stereos easily from moving vehicles you can shoot also from planes. Well, actually, this is not taken from a plane. This is taken from a footage on TV. But the movie was obviously taken from a plane. You might have seen um, those plane or video extractions on, um, on Instagram. There are many people doing, doing um, stereos in this way. And you can also use movement. David also mentioned uh, the cloud stereo thing. If you just wait and move just a little, you will have a large movement because the clouds have done it for you. So the latest thing um, I've tried are drone stereos. So I have obviously my own little plane. Well, it's not my plane um, because I met someone or I, I found an Instagram profile of a guy who only takes drone stereos and lives in the city nearby, um, just over the river. And so I contacted him and told him about stereoscopy and he said, oh, well, we could try it. And this is um, a castle in my home hometown as well. And this was the first place where we tried to do drone stereos. And uh, like David um, told you, we, uh, we all also did a sequence, a series of uh, side, sideways shifted uh, pictures. So at least I think, well, three at least up to seven. And I still can choose what, uh, what, is, uh, what is in my opinion, the right pair.
the good thing is you don't have to look for a place uh, where you where you can um, walk sideways and have nothing in the foreground. You can just fly around as you want. The only limiting factor is the battery of the drone, which is a big limitation. So um, we had, I think for one flight, we had 20 minutes. So it, you have to decide which object you want to photograph. You have to drive there. And then you can only take a photo from this um, castle, for example, and that's it. This is a limitation, but I think the pictures are really, really cool because you can, you can really see um, the forest, uh, the shape of the forest going back until there uh, is a river in the background, but you can hardly see it, I think. So this is um, a church in, um, in Wiesbaden. This is uh, quite close here as well. And you can not only um, shoot uh, photos from distant objects, but you can also use it to have um, yeah, kind of a mini miniaturization of a large objects like here. If I if I switch the pictures too fast, please uh, anyone say stop or slow down or something like that. This is another castle. And um, we, we have um, another example here. And from this point of view, I don't know how they did it, but there is also an old a hyper stereo from exactly the same point, but there is nothing. I don't know if the if uh, they have climbed onto the trees or how they did it. As far as I know, there were was no additional mountain a uh, hundred years ago, but somehow they did it. This is a really early one. This is uh, Duboc Soleil, so I think from the eighteen fifties, the fifties. Obviously, here is something disturbing in the in the foreground as well. So sometimes this, that's what happens. So I have a few more. You can um, keep your viewers on. This is another castle, a little more far away. Again, you can just, if you, if you see um, on the, you have a live screen on your smartphone that is connected um, to the drone. And if you, and you can really see, oh, it looks good from here, fly over to the left and so on. And then if you have the right uh, perspective, you can just use that, um, the, the controls to just move it sideways. It's even, easier than uh, than taking a cha-cha because you have only uh, one button to press and the drone flies exactly to the side i think we are close to the end i don't know how many are, are left here again you can also see the shape of the valley in the background. Um, there is a question. Yes, I um, I don't film because it's um, taking more battery um, if I make a video and it's difficult to extract. But um, 
Do you remember, uh, David Kunz, what was the name of the Stereo Photo Maker um, feature where you can see both of the pictures um, at once when you shift it? You told you talked about this feature. That's in, that's in steroid the the uh, phone yeah, app on exactly. Stereo Photo Maker. Exactly, it enables you to see. Um, to see uh, both uh, images so that you can see how much uh, movement there is already. And that's what I did. Um, I told him to move sideways and I closely watched the um, phone screen. And some, somehow I quickly got a feeling for the right amount of movement um, by, just, uh, by just looking how the pictures um, changed. So here's another one. Um, Cindy, the wind conditions, yes, of course, they are affecting drone stereos. Um, we we uh, always uh, watched um, for calm uh, weather. So that was the last one. Thank you, Pascal. Buzz. Thank you. Love that demo. That was an awesome demo. <laughs> that was very cool. Very, very smooth. Very uh, clear to understand. So thanks for um, putting so much work into doing that. Um, any um, other? Uh, please give me um, if you if you uh, play around with my animation and you um, find out that something is wrong from the scientific uh, side, please let me know. I'll change that. Uh, I think you answered the questions that were in the chat already. Um, maybe. Um, I see Gord. Did you answer Gordon's questions here? Uh, uh, no. Okay, do you see his questions? Um, no. Okay, um, one is, do you always keep the drone camera sight lines parallel? Have you also tried slight rotations around a subject? Um, no, I, the guy who flies the, who flies the drone, because I don't have my own yet, um, he has, um, footages with uh, circular movements, but I was not able to extract um, stereos from them. I think because probably the circle was um, maybe um, perfect, but maybe the object was not in the center. So this could be some reason, by, but I really did not try it because of um, I did, didn't want to waste battery. As I said, this is the really limiting factor. There's a second one Gordon had that you may have touched on already. Um, have you tried making stereo video from horizontal panning drone footage? Um, no, I did not because we did not make videos. And here's one uh, that just came in from Robert. Um, would be interested to see any new or vintage images you may have of the, ooh, I can't pronounce that. <laughs> think, uh, unfortunately, I don't have any images from this. How did you, how did you pronounce that? For, well, actually there is um, an O which mm -hmm. needs two dots on it. For okay. Question. Think mal. All right, got it. And there is an H missing, uh, missing between the C and the T. Okay. Um, but no, I, I don't have, I don't have any photos from that. All right, and I think the rest are um, coming in. Just additional comments. Are there any other um, questions anyone has for Pascal? All right. Well, if you have questions, you guys know where he's at on Instagram <laughs> and on Stereo site. So 